When floods came, the water stayed for 10 to 15 days. Any rice crop that was transplanted was submerged and completely damaged. When we transplanted, the seedlings would be submerged and damaged. So we stopped transplanting and only produced one crop per year. Floods have always been a feature of lowland rice farming system and can destroy rice crops. Let us listen to Akbar Ali from Northwest Bangladesh on how the floods have changed over the years. 28 to 30 years ago, the floods came more frequently, but the water did not stay long. Now, although the floods occur less frequently, the water stays longer. I don't know why, it may be because of poor drainage. Rice plants are being damaged by the floods because the water stays longer. After the flood water has gone down, farmers frequently have to transplant again. They have to buy new seedlings from the market, often not knowing of which variety they are. At times, they may be none available. Any new seedlings will have to be transplanted, requiring additional labor. Inputs such as fertilizers will also have to be purchased again which many cannot afford. Often, farmers have no choice but to leave their land fallow and wait until next season to grow a crop. Rice plants cannot survive for long when they are completely underwater as the seedlings do not receive enough sunlight when they are submerged. So what is the solution for flood prone areas? The answer is flood tolerant rice. In this video, we will take a closer look at how to select suitable rice varieties, use quality seeds, grow healthy and vigorous seedlings and manage your field after flooding. First, to help you, scientists have developed varieties that are tolerant to flooding for up to two weeks. Find out from your local seed dealer, farmer field school or research institute whether you can get flood tolerant rice varieties from them. In Binnatari village, Rahima and her colleagues from the farmer field school tried out a new flood tolerant rice variety for themselves. After being submerged, we thought the rice crop would rot and become damaged. We were all disheartened. We had transplanted the rice, but would it be damaged? After the water had receded, we visited the rice fields and saw the crop with muddy leaves. But our crops recovered and everyone was happy. We had a good harvest of rice. Second, use quality seed of the new flood tolerant varieties free of insect damage, disease or mixtures. Manik Mia from Suttarpur village has been producing quality seeds since 2008. After harvesting the rice, I take the seeds and dry them in the sun, clean them and store them in a polythene sack placed in a jute bag. I preserve seeds in my house for my own use. I give some to my relatives and some I sell in the market. Some farmers also come to my house to buy seeds and I have sold 8 tons of seed this year to a retailer for 30 taka per kilogram. Third, grow strong, vigorous seedlings. Lower seed density in the seed bed gives stronger seedlings. Higher density gives thin and weak seedlings. These will be easily damaged by flood water after transplanting. Four week old seedlings are stronger than three week old seedlings. So in flood prone areas, it is better to transplant seedlings that are a bit older. Let's hear from Muhammad Nur Zaman how we grow strong seedlings for transplanting flood tolerant rice. Previously, we used about 2.5 kilograms of seed per 10 square meters, but the seedlings became thin and weak. These seedlings, when transplanted and submerged for 10 to 15 days, became damaged. Now we use a low seed rate, only half a kilogram of seed on the same area. The seedlings become strong and vigorous. The seedlings are not damaged even when submerged for 15 days. Fourth, manage your field once the flood water has gone down. If the flood water contained a lot of silt, 
this will stick to the leaves. The silt makes it impossible for the leaves to breathe and absorb sunlight which is needed for the plants to grow. Carefully wash away the silt on the leaves. Do not apply urea immediately after the flood as this will cause the rice plant to rot. One week after the flood water has subsided, remove any aquatic weeds and garbage brought by the flood water. Apply urea, but 40 kg per hectare and a similar amount of potassium fertilizer. By this time, the rice plants will have recovered and are ready to take up nutrients again. Two weeks after the first application, apply a similar dose of urea. So what have we learned? Choose suitable varieties that can tolerate flooded conditions. Use quality seeds that are free of damage and mixtures. Quality seeds give strong seedlings. Grow healthy and vigorous seedlings. Lower seed density in your seed bed is better because it gives stronger seedlings. Transplanting older seedlings makes them resist floods better. After the flood, remove aquatic weeds and any garbage. If necessary, carefully wash away the silt from the leaves. One week after the flood water has subsided, apply about 40 kg of urea per hectare and a similar amount of potassium fertilizer. Two weeks after the first application, apply a similar dose of urea. After receiving seeds, I give the seedlings. Even after being fully submerged for 12 days, the plants were not damaged. Using flood tolerant rice varieties will help you grow a good crop in flood prone areas. Miracles do exist.